Okay, being all black, ladies and gentlemen, and yes, I will throw myself on the gauntlet, but actually, my theory isn't even a theory. It's pretty much actual, factual. No tale of magnitude on Comet Lovejoy. And this is an old video that's showing you, which is basically, it's, anti, it's an anti, well, basically, it's a thermal, uh, NASA's going to call whatever they call it, but basically what it is is in order to, the brightness of the sun, the different colors that you see that when we they put it in the shots because I've showed you and I do have some footage that I'll show you in a minute of how clear that stuff is in space from the satellite they don't want to show off too much and it doesn't really matter I actually like to brag about the United States of America's satellite power to be able to see anything just about anywhere uh, you can't hide nothing and they can hear everything too okay so now the actual factual is you see this here this is Comet Lovejoy and as you see there's no magnetical because even the magnetical would show up on this and if you can even I haven't taken time to look at the magnetical shots but I'm going to show you some actual factual here in a second that's going to mean it you just all you got to do is back up the footage and take a look at this and I'll even hit play on this and see what else we've got footage in here real fast but this was Lovejoy and as you can see the twirling around and you can see that the only magnetical that Lovejoy had was negative and it changed its polarity when it went around the sun okay so as you see there and actually I just quoted that wrong that's the positive polarity it had it came around with a positive polarity and went to a negative polarity which basically Lovejoy is the same as Comet Panstars in, and this is all Lovejoy going around now, but as you see that there was no uh, negative on the tail. See, there's no negative line on the tail. All this footage of Lovejoy going by, okay? And then I'm going to take you to Panstars real fast, because I want to jam a bunch of data in here to, uh, and then check the Okay, so basically, as this came by, it only had the positive. And I gotta freeze that so you can see it. Hang on. Here we go. And here comes the positive. And it won't. But basically, okay, we're gonna freeze it. We're gonna catch it here. Hang on. We'll get back. This was all Lovejoy in the twirlers, the Twizzler that followed it, and stuff like that. And there's a lot more than one material. And I'm gonna be able to show you in, uh, also in on pan stars right now now you can see the positive you watch this line right here this is the positive okay and it turns into a negative polarity ACDC okay so it only had a positive once a planetoid object loses its positive and negative or just one other then it goes into a flying orbit now remember they only found pan stars Hopefully I can, and there, you get a little bit more, and you could see it, that it only had a positive, which is on top, and I, we're viewing the sun to the right, positive, and then the negative polarity. So basically, uh, Lovejoy, okay, comet, they want to sit and say comet, planetoid object, in an orbit, with only a positive, and when it went around the sun, the sun was powerful enough to change the polarity to only a negative polarity and it kept falling uh, there is a possibility that if a object was to go by a strong enough star it wouldn't just change the polarity it would actually grab that in its magnetical force and you'd have a new planet that's right ladies and gentlemen that's why there is way more than just the big bang there's big bangs okay so now let me uh, cue us up here remember folks this here is art and then we'll get to the real this is actual pictures from space and this is what I've tried to tell you I'll also have a picture of the Sun here in a minute too and as you can see the front energy this is pan stars that's coming around okay and look at the energy out in front the plasma field okay and then you're gonna see the magnetical and you're going to see that one of these days it's very possible that pan stars might they figure that the, it could be a hundred million years that it's been traveling to get by us now, okay? And it's a very possible, very possible. 
Okay, the orbit is huge. They, they're still mapping it. Okay, so let me play Pan Stars coming in here. And as, as you're going to see, we have a planetoid object right here that does not rotate, and that is not Venus. Now, Venus does not rotate uh, to the east. Okay, it, ro it rotates uh, clockwise, but it does not orbit the sun clockwise. Okay. It orbit, and that's not Venus. Okay, that's our planetoid object. One of them we found in the, in our solar system. And what's great about pan stars? So we end up finding our other. As you see, we got two magneticals here too. So we have other planets in our solar system. And as you know, it came through our solar system. That's our sun there. Okay, and here's some footage. And I'm going to cut some stuff out because you don't need to see overpaid tax dollars employees that don't even know as much as even you do after you watch me and some other people that you want to you get your actual factual data from okay so this is all comet pan stars and uh, let me cue it up now there's your American tax dollars paid for telescope and plus institutes and so forth and so on but it's still there's tax dollars that go into that because this is an American Australian yes correct okay uh, nobody else gets any credit besides America or Australia because for as far as I'm known by any paperwork that I know of this is just an American and Australian telescope that's the one that found pan stars falling through space and you see the footage and you're going to see some more of that that it has a negative polarity that still clung to it and you can see a faintness of a positive polarity but it's not connected to the Sun ie so it's not on the same platitude of Lovejoy. That means that it actually might be a fast orbiting planet of a humongous star. That's right. And it skimmed through our solar system, which is basically electrically positive negative charged, somewhat connected to the sun, or at least the sun possibly could have caught pan stars which I'm not going to call a comet too much because why of the strong magnetical tail that it had when it came by okay and it had the negative polarity that if the Sun would have been as big as like Rigel or any other of the super giants that are like 74 times the size of the Sun it possibly could have caught it like a spider web could actually catch a train okay everything's electrical everything's static okay and once something can break the static then it's got it caught okay if you catch a static signal you intercept a radio signal then you have static connection to it and yes I can find radio signals so people who try to bug Beano Black they get in trouble because the idea that I own it if that signal is going through your body you own it so now I own some bitches okay so let's get into a little bit more of uh, actual factual non I am not paid by the government so I can free speech and tell you the facts okay uh, it's illegal to uh, without a warrant to electronically monitor and track someone yes it's a felony ladies and gentlemen okay so so NASA and every uh, astrophysicists in the world is in trouble now for thinking and saying that they can cover everything up by calling it everything an Oort cloud and calling everything a comet because more than likely uh, pan stars might possibly not even be a comet it might be actually a orbital of a super giant star somewhere out in space okay uh, and all I gotta do Far is the speed the of Pluto. and the arc of, and don't listen to this Pluto thing because it's way out beyond Pluto okay I mean it, it's arc is go to JPL you'll see yeah so pay attention to the orbit on JPL on pan stars and you'll realize that basically it is possibly act so now as it comes along this there's your ion so basically yes it has a <coughs> negative strong and a light positive cling to it. Now there is another object comes streaking across the sky. There's going to be there. You see that comet? There's a comet for it. There's an asteroid or whatever that came by. Okay, and there's pan stars. And you can even see the tail of that. You can back that footage up because I'm running out of a little bit of time. So because you can see, we had a strong negative polarity 
and this is pan stars that came through. And then also, even NASA tried to cover up our planetoid object that is rotating. If you watch this footage, it is rotating. Now this is Earth here, our magnetical there. This is Mercury here. And also I got some footage real fast that I got to show you. A webcam caught something high above, and it's not Mercury, okay? And they caught it high above uh, the sun, and the sun did a huge CME to it. Now there's a good possibility it may have been pan stars, uh, but it was high above. But since you see as this traveled up, and I don't have the date and stuff on this footage, but since the magnetical line, the t strong magnetic connection, as you can see the, the positive north on it also, but the idea that this is a planetoid object in a fast orbit around another huge sun somewhere out in space, okay? And when it comes around, something happened in space that it is basically and I gotta, I'll just cue us real fast, get us back to that, play that footage again. Got to make sure I don't see some sack of poop's face. And then we hit that, and we should be able to, and then you will realize that this is basically an orbital of another sun that has the same direction of positive and negative. And there was a chance that if the sun would be a huge supergiant, that it could have possibly caught this object and had it stay in our solar system. So there is a, an electrical connection to another solar system with pan stars, which is something of an orbit of 100 million years. Okay, So we get a good uh, positive of knowing how large the magnetical cling of the Milky Way galaxy Okay, and then there's two other planets out here too. I'm going to have to locate and find out what we got going on with and we'll come back into that with more videos. I'm going to show you some earthquake information and another great webcam shot from down here on Earth, okay? Okay, I can't talk about uh, too much here. We're going to get hurry up and get a lot of data in you real fast. Make sure you look at the kilometers a second, okay? Kilometers a second speed on this on our objects. I'm going to hurry up and give you uh, off cactus. We're going to look at and you're going to see what's, what is actually electrical connection and there's may, way more than one that is blinging us and basically I think I can I'm gonna hit play in a second on each one of these hurry up and get these into you I might have repeated there I don't have all day to do all these and as you see this this is the same thing here now you're gonna watch this go to black and then and these are different days okay I got the 13th there 13th there so I doubled up on one but you can see that that's there okay but as you see, is on the 13th, we they had uh, not going to get into that right now. But let's go ahead and hit play on this, and you're going to see this go to black. And what you're going to see is the bling bling, the electrical connection from other stars out in space. Okay, so we've got uh, 712, and they're basically showing you capturing the CME and letting you know about the CME location with the drawings. But I'm showing you the electrical connection from out in space. Okay because we can hit that like that and you can see it went to black also so you can see what's striking basically it's like the charcoal lighter ladies and gentlemen because uh, basically the sun is a nuclear fusion okay it's not a charcoal briquette but it's the size of it too it's gonna burn forever pretty much not forever billions of years but Okay, so it's electrical energy, and remember a candle puts off, I can make a can a candle, you can get a decent, just an average table candle, and you can get 20,000 volts from it, okay? It's actual factual. I'm an electrician, I can prove it to you, okay? Uh, I've actually even got a video that's, that I'm not, and actually that country would be going to be pretty pissed off when they find out that somebody actually made a route. So, uh, especially since they are pro-nuclear, the idea that they don't want everybody buying a candle and making uh, electricity for themselves and there's other ways you could do it too so anyway that's data from cactus we've been getting a lot of cme action let's hurry up and get some of that cme action in again and basically just plop through cactus again here real fast and you can freeze these and that's that electrical energy there and there's also been some electrical strikes that come from here and remember remember your positive and your negative polarity your negative is on the bottom of the earth okay and as you watch the sun rotate 
you can watch this, you'll see the negative polarity is the blue area, and then the red area is your positive polarity, and that's the sun, which has us magnetically connected. And yes, 